fact is, Betty's death is a tragedy, a very bad tragedy. And we are truly sorry for her loss. This was an uncommon emergency, you know, and she suffered a terrible injury from three loose dogs that resulted in her death. And so our request to the Health Quality Council of Alberta was clear. We needed to understand our role in that situation. That day there was no single action or activity that by itself uh, slowed the ambulance response times. It was a confluence of many things that came together on that day. Our review identified five issues with a series of factors that contributed to each of those and contributed to the response delay, some more significantly than others. So those five issues. The event was initially coded as non-life-threatening. There were challenges providing updates on the patient's condition. Demand for EMS uh, exceeded the available resources that day. EMS initially went to the front of the patient's front or the front door of the patient's home and not the back alley. And lastly, the relationship between Calgary 911 and Alberta Health Services EMS negatively affects how they work together. So to address these issues, we made 16 recommendations for improvement. And as John indicated, they're directed at AHS, the City of Calgary, the Calgary Police Service, and the Ministry of Municipal Affairs. The EMS response time was 30 minutes and 22 seconds from the time EMS entered the event into their computer-aided dispatch system to when EMS arrived on scene. And based on modeling that was done, if that event had been initially coded as life-threatening, the response time would have been reduced to 14 minutes and 26 seconds, still exceeding but much closer to EMS's uh, targeted response times. I think that what we do know about trauma is that earlier response is better and it sort of goes to that question of you know well 14 minutes we're still off the 12 minutes or whatever uh, it, 12 minutes is you know we can set 12 as our benchmark eight would be better right like the the sooner we get to trauma patients the better they do um, as a rule so even if the answer about miss williams specifically is no that it wouldn't have made a difference I still think there is much to be learned here, and if there are things that we can take from this report that allow us to provide better, faster, more responsive service, then we should do them, right? Even if it wasn't going to save Mrs. Williams per se. And the offload time is the time it takes when responsibility for the care transfers from the paramedic to the emergency department. Now that is a very critical time, and any paramedic in the room knows exactly what I'm talking about, as do the physicians in the room, as do me, Charlene, and Morrow. It is the magic number, in my view, that must be shortened by all means possible, and we are really working on that. And I hope in the not-too-distant future to give you news about hospital time, because that is a much easier measure. But we know the offload time is a huge component of that time. So get that one so sorted out and measured correctly. We know the other one will shrink. Now our capacity increases. Because we're not wasting capacity in an emergency department. Because that's actually what's happening. We're tying up vital capacity that needs to be there to, to you know, rescue Betty Ann Williams. 